Okay, so tonight we have thinking all the way around a query. Uh, this came about because I had a problem at work yesterday, and I, in the course of working out, out, I thought, well, this would make an absolutely excellent blog and or video, so we're doing both. Um, I had, uh, oh, okay, let's start with a simple scenario. Basically, we have two tables. We want to insert from the first table into the second while ignoring duplicates. Um, Thinking all the way around a query uh, in this case means even though this looks like a simple scenario, you've got more to worry about than you would think. Um, not only do you not want to violate the primary key to, to insert duplicate rows, um, but you've got to consider making sure you get all of your rows and some other things too. But we'll jump right into it. For this scenario, two tables, um, two columns each, and we're going to make those two columns a composite uh, key. So, okay, uh, we're going to create table one and here, maybe I should get out of the master database. Uh, there we go. Create table one. <sighs> Sorry about that. All right, we're creating tables. Creating table one, two columns wide. Uh, maybe I created it before. Yeah, I've, I've got to go drop these tables. Hang on. Drop table one. Oh, drop table. Table one. And drop table, table two to start with a clean slate, right? Okay, there we go. Now, let's create table one, two columns wide. Let's create our unique clustered index. Um, it's comp composite key, can't stress that enough, right? There we go. And it would be slightly less complicated if we didn't have a composite key, if we only had a single column key to work with. Anyway, okay, uh, table two, same thing. There's our uh, index on that as well. We're gonna populate the tables. Table one. Um, rows are all inserted, table two. Now already, um, we'll take a look and see that uh, we've got one potential duplicate row to worry about. Imagine that, I set it up that way. Um, uh, two and three is duplicated. So if we go down here and we do just a straight insert from table one into table two, boop, you can't do it it violates the unique index right there. And if we go and select out of our tables, select star from table one with an E and table two, you'll see that there, oh, what did I do? Ha, <laughs> I can't type select. Can't tell you how many times a day I do that. Select, um, so yeah, it did not insert anything. All right, moving right along, Fozzy. Um, we can get around that with a simple where clause, of course. Say, insert into table two from table one, where um, table one, column one is not in select one from table, uh, column one from table two. Meaning, okay, um, if, if that was just too much, uh, we're saying, all right, if, we've, if um, this value here is in column one of table two, don't insert it. Well, let's see how that works out, shall we? Mm, I've got the right one, right? Yep. Let's run it. Two rows affected. Hey, we didn't hit violate the primary key. Uh, let's take a look at our data. But it only inserted um, two rows. We've got, let's see, five rows here that should have been inserted. What's the problem? Well, the problem is we're only galling off part of the primary key. That's no good. You're saying uh, we're not really following business logic here. Um, uh, so one and one. Um, hang on, is that a was that a duplicate key? Oh, look at that. I didn't even pay attention. Okay, so that's the other duplicate key that wasn't entered. Uh, but down here, looking at uh, the column one eights, neither one of these eight nine or eight ten was inserted into table two because there's an eight. Zero. Clear as mud? Yes? Okay. We're going to go ahead and move on. Uh, so let's wipe our tables clean real quick and repopulate them. I shouldn't have uh, gotten rid of the... I guess we can just truncate. Okay, so we're starting with a fresh slate again. We're going to repopulate the tables like we did before and move on to next. So what's the right solution? I'll say a correct answer, because there's always more than one way, but this is probably 
was about as good as you're going to get, is uh, a correlated subquery. Okay, I actually paused for a question. I've got a little audience here, and we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute. But right now we've got a correlated subquery. What we're essentially saying here is, here's our insert um, into table 2 from table 1, these two columns, where not exists. And here's our correlated subquery. Um, select from table 2, where column 1, all right, it, it, well, it's where column 1 equals T1 column 1 right that's in our parent table and column 2 equals t1 column 2 and then on that there's a not exist so let's let's break this down a little bit better okay this this subquery right here looks for rows that do exist in table 2 that are the same as rows in table 1 and then here we say where they don't exist got it Okay, my audience here is actually shaking their head, so I'll go ahead and try and say that one more time. Um, your so, your subquery is looking for rows that match, right? And then in your parent query, you're saying where those don't exist. So everything that's not a duplicate row in plain English. All right, so our bonus question here while, while we were making this video was, well, can't you do just do a negative join? I said, well, I tried that and it didn't come out well. Let's go ahead and explore that here. This is all off the cuff. We'll just copy this and we're going to get rid of our subquery. Uh, we'll get rid of our where not exists and we'll say, okay, uh, from table one, T1 joined, uh, table A, B, L, E, I can spell table, two, T2 on T2 dot call one is not equal to t1.call1 come on and t2.call2 is not equal to t2.call2 now this really seems like it would make sense right we're gonna join with this table 2 God, I, I hope this works out the way it did before um, on uh, making sure that uh, column 1 does not equal to uh, sorry yeah column 1 is not equal to and column 2 is not equal to right it makes sense Let's go ahead and select that. Here, just for clarity, let's do a select before we run that and a select after. So select star from table, just table two. Let's keep this kind of clean. And select star from table two after. So um, here we go, F5, ambiguous column name. Ha! Yeah, maybe I should specify. Okay, select T1 column 1 and T1 column 2 uh, because we're selecting from table 1 into table 2. Here we go. Let's try it again. Mm. Okay. Okay. The sharper viewers among you would have figured out why there were no rows inserted. I was puzzled. Um, I got I put in here in my join column that T2 to column 2 is not equal to T2 column 2 which will never evaluate to true. Do you under let's try this again, okay? T2, let's compare T2 to T1, and we'll see how that works. Let's try this again. And uh, by the way, since nothing was inserted, we don't have to go back and, and wipe the tables and repopulate. Let's just try this again, now that I've got my join queries worked out. Um, Okay, so we actually got uh, cannot insert duplicate key row. We, we got a primary key violation based off of this. Okay, to understand why we, we got a primary key violation, you have to understand how a join actually works. And let's step through it logically real quick. Um, this could actually be a separate little video on its own. Uh, when you have a join, you've got your, your source table, you've got your destination, or we'll say your from table and your join table, and then you've got your, um, your criteria. Um, we'll, let's step it through in this particular example. By the way, we once again didn't have any effect on our table, so we don't have to clear it. Um, select star from table one. You'd think I would just keep this handy, right? But no, I want to make you watch me retype it every time, because I like it. Okay, um, so we've got our join criteria from table one to table two. So for every column here, we're going to see if we can get a true for our join criteria, which, let's move this down so we can see it, better. 
So let's let's go through it like you know, like stepping through a, a, a program step by step, right? Um, the processor says, okay, we're going to start with row one from table one. So we're we're saying uh, uh, column one, column two. So this is one one, right? Are our current values one comma one, and we're going to compare that to table two. Um, first column is one one, so one is not equal to one evaluates as false and uh, it doesn't really matter and it, the whole statement is false now but this happens to be false too so that is not a match let us compare to the next row in table two which is what happens next um, one one compared against two three one is not equal to two well that's true one is not equal to three that is also true therefore we have found something that agrees with our um, with our join criteria and we can insert it is the logic and then it goes to insert it and this actually is a violation of primary key you see how we have to look at this from every different angle and really really understand what the code is doing you know at, at a fairly basic level um, to see why we really need the correlated subquery and not um, a, a join based on negative operators. So that's your little bonus section right there. And um, I'm going to comment this out and keep it, I guess. Hang on. Do, 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 do. All the betters. <laughs>